Hello and welcome to this tutorial. Today we are going to see how to work with localize OTA and how to get started with the Flutter SDK. So if you don't know the term OTA stands for over the air and this service enables your users to get the latest uh, translations on their mobile applications without you needing to submit a new version to be approved by either the Apple or Google App Stores. Basically, over-the-air localization is a lightweight way to instantly update the content in your apps. It is quite useful for fixing typos, finishing translations on the fly, and adding new languages. All right, so to get started, let's create a new Flutter application like this. It is going to be a simple to-do app. And so now we should be actually good to go. All right, so here is this app. And well, the next step is to create a localized project. So obviously you will need a localized account for that. You can grab your free trial at localize.com. Once this project is created, let's do well, a couple of important things. First of all, let's click more settings and let's take a note of the project ID. So let's copy it and let's paste it here because we will need it later. Also, let's proceed to localize SDK tokens section and let's say generate new token. Let's copy this token because we are going to use it to request translations on the fly. So once the application is loaded for the user, translations will be requested from localize and well updated as needed. All right, let's open the pop spec file and let's find the dependencies section and let's say flutter localizations it should be sdk flutter and then also let's say intel and let's say localize then flutter sdk and the version is 1.0 that's the latest version at the time of recording this video then let's say flutter pop get so it was done automatically for me and now everything is great. The next step is creating translation files here inside this project. So let's open lib folder. Let's create another folder l10n and inside there should be a file called intel en.arb and so well this en means English. So that's the language code that I would like to support and let's paste the following content. So we can see the locale, modification date, and those are your translation keys. Here you can see how to use placeholders to interpolate some kind of a value here inside this translation. And here you can see how to use pluralization. So that's the case when we don't have any tasks, then there is the case when we have one task. And that's the case when we have multiple tasks. So that's how you can use uh, these uh, pluralization rules. All right, and so uh, let's also create a file with uh, Spanish translations. So this file is very, very similar as you can see, and of course you can create other files as needed. And now we should generate a Dart files. So run the following command. So based on those ARB files, it is going to create special Dart files with all your translations and those files will live inside generated directory. We can see that here are our messages and please note that those files should not be modified directly. So if you make some changes to your ARB files, then don't forget to run this command once again. Okay, so far so good. Now let's return to localize and let's upload our translation files because later we will use those translations to create over the air bundles to deliver updated translations directly to your customers. So let's choose our ARB files. Make sure not to choose those Dart files. Make sure that the languages are detected properly and then you can return to your editor and make sure that your translations are displayed. All right. 
Next, let's return to our app. Let's close those files and let's proceed to this main Dart file. Let's remove all this data and let's import the necessary packages. Also, we should create a main function inside and this function will be used to initialize our SDK. And here we must provide at least two parameters. So first of all, that should be our SDK token. So we've already generated this token. So let's paste it here. Also, we need the project ID. So let's provide the project ID as well. And well, those two parameters, those are optional. So this pre-release should be set to true if you are using staging bundles, staging over the air bundles. As long as we are going to publish our bundles to production, we can say false. As for the app version, this should be provided only if you are using bundle freezes. And to learn about bundle freezes, you can check our documentation. So this should be used to explicitly set the app version when the automatic detection is not possible, for example, in web apps. Okay, so let's comment this out because we're not going to use that. And the next step is creating the app folder and the app.dart file. Inside this file, let's import the necessary packages once again, just like this, and let's create the app class. So inside this app class, now we can see that we are using this localization delegates. So that's very important thing to add and the supported locales. So our supported locales is English and Spanish. And so those locales should be determined automatically for you. Another very important thing to note is actually how you are fetching the translation data. You should use this LT class and use this key name. So uh, this key name comes from your translation files. So the title is the name of your translation key. And so you would like to replace this key with the corresponding value when the application is served to the end user. So that's why here I'm saying title. Uh, that's the name of your key. And using the following approach, you can fetch all the translation data as needed. Okay, so save the changes and let's create the views, the views directory. And inside the views directory, we should say screens. And well, we're going to have a to do screen. So let's say to do screen. And well, that's going to be a to do screen dot dart file. Now let's actually import the necessary packages as well. And let's code this class. Well, uh, this class is not too complex. Actually, it contains some general, some, well, some boilerplate code. So it uses some models, uh, you know, once again, it contains uh, the translation data. And note, by the way, that here we are passing the argument to this key. So this completed to do is the plural key and we should uh, provide the count so that uh, Flutter knows which translation to display. And so, uh, well, uh, this length will vary depending on, well, the current count of the completed to do items. And so that's why we are passing it as an argument. The same thing happens here, as you can see, and well, um, a total to do as well. So as for the total to do, we are just providing the count just like this. And other things are working in a very similar way. You can actually find this source code in our GitHub. So I'm going to provide a link to this repository, you can find the link in the video description. Also note this part, because here we are actually updating the translations using over the air service. And so we are waiting until these translations are downloaded. And so once everything is loaded, we are saying that is loading in is false. And in this case, uh, the uh, loading widget should be hidden. We're going to code uh, this widget a bit later. All right. So basically that's, that's pretty much it. Let's create the widgets 
directory and inside the widgets we are going to say add to do button dot dart so that's going to be a button to create a new to do let's import all the necessary packages and let's just code uh, this button so it's going to use a module where we'll create this module a bit later and once again we are using our translations just like this so nothing too complex about that the next widget is going to be called to do row dot dart and once again we are using uh, this boilerplate code and importing all the necessary packages and finally we should create a to do section dot dart and this section will look like this once again the code is quite simple also let's not forget about the module it will live inside the modules directory and we are going to call it to do model dot dart this is a very simple model as you can see so our to do is going to contain a title and this completed attribute also inside the views let's create uh, custom widgets directory and we should add a loading dot dart file inside so there's going to be our loading widget that will be displayed until translations are actually fetched from localized using over the air that's it so that's our application at this point we can actually run it so now it is going to build the application so i'm going to pause the recording and i'll get back to you once everything is loaded all right welcome back so as you can see my application is loaded so everything is translated properly everything is great i can create a new to do let's say test it says one as you can see it says one pending task then let's say test two and we can see it says two pending tasks so this pluralization is uh, working correctly we can press on it and now those tasks are actually completed everything is great but now the question is how do we implement the over the air flow and that's actually a fair question you can say so let's return to localize and well let's maybe modify those uh, those translations a bit so for example let's say maybe add new item and maybe let's also say to do list and i'm going to say updated so that we can see this change right away and so i would like to deliver those updates to my customers but i don't want to republish my application on for example google store so i don't want to download those translations and i don't want to you know update this file rebuild my application and reapprove it with google because it may take quite a lot of time and so instead i would like to deliver those two updates to my customers and i am going to tag my updated keys i'm going to say post version one so let's suppose that the first version of our application is already published on app store and so we are taking only the keys that were actually updated so all other keys should not be tagged because i would like to include only those translations into the bundle why well because the bundle should be as slim as possible because it will be downloaded by your customers and if the bundle is too large then well of course it will take quite some time to download this bundle all right and now we need to, to generate our OTA bundle therefore proceed to the download page and here you should choose the flutter sdk format from the mobile sdk section if you don't see this format available please reach out to our support team by using this chat widget in the bottom right corner and then choose one of the languages or all languages of course it makes sense to choose only the language that was actually modified to include in the bundle and then make sure to choose the tag 
to include and that's going to be post version 1 and basically uh, this is it of course you can adjust other advanced settings but it's not really mandatory and once you're ready you can press build only to prepare this ot bundle for you you can download it if you wish but it's not required and then to actually manage your bundles you proceed to more settings and then here to the left you can find the OT bundle section and well in this page you can manage your bundles for various mobile applications so let's proceed to flutter and here is our first bundle that we've just created you can actually give it a name maybe post version one or something like that well you can see that is it was generated by me here is the bundle id you can click on this bundle id to download it and actually you can see that it is possible to set uh, one of the bundles as production and another bundle as pre-release so for instance if you generate another bundle let, let, let's generate some sample bundle and if we return to more settings OTA bundles then you will see that we have two different bundles now and you can set one of those bundles as production so this is like the main bundle and the pre-release bundle will be served only to mobile applications that have the pre-release switch set to true uh, well uh, when initializing our flutter sdk basically and it is possible to you know toggle those switches as you see fit you can have only one production and one pre-release bundle at most of course you can delete one of those bundles and finally you can actually create a bundle freeze so for example you can choose to serve this post version one bundle to apps from 1.0 to i don't know 1.0 nine for instance so this bundle will be served only to applications with this version you can save the changes now you can actually add another free spirit and maybe another bundle should be served to these versions instead so you choose this new bundle now different applications will have different translations it's quite a useful feature as well i have to mention that uh, well all these interactions can also be performed by using our api so you can check our rest api by going to developers.localize.com that's our developers hub and if you scroll to the bottom of this page you will be able to find this auto section and here you can work uh, with the bundles you can create bundle freezes you can uh, you know delete the bundles if you'd like you can publish the bundles to production so all this is possible by using the api as well and that's pretty much it now those bundles will be served to your customers and we can see how it works in practice let me remind you that we have specified this new word here and we have specified this updated word here so this translation will be replaced by the translation taken from localized so this translation will take higher priority than this one okay so let's actually start debugging once again and let's launch our application and we should see that our translations are updated even though i haven't modified my local translation files so those should be generated on the fly take a look at that and did you see that so first it's said to do list but then it said to do list updated because of those translations were downloaded and here it says add new item here as a hint all other translations are working just great so well other translations are simply fetched from your local translation files so it means that effectively our over the air flow is working properly so great job of course you can learn more about this flow inside the guides section so you can uh, take a look at ota sdk to learn more about ota in general and also you can take a look at this flutter sdk to learn more about flutter specifically so it explains how to get all the tokens how to manage bundles etc etc so lots of 
useful information. And finally, if you'd like to learn more about working with bundle freezes and with the API in general, and you can take a look at this working with the OTA API. So here it explains how to create a bundle freeze, so why bundle freezes are needed, etc., etc. Uh, so feel free to browse uh, this document. And that's it for today. I thank you for staying with me and we stay localized and happy coding.